noblegoldinvestment.com. That's www.noblegoldinvestments.com. Hey, you're feeling unsure about your finances these days. Well, you're not alone. That's why Noble Gold Investments is here to help. Just let me just tell you to you, straight from the folks they've already helped. One man said that noblegoldinvestments.com's crew walked me through everything and no stress. Another one said, and with their help, I can finally sleep easy at night. And now this month, noblegoldinvestment.com is handing out for free these five ounces of pure silver, America the beautiful coin. If you qualify, look at this, for the IRA, and they can, they'll give this to you guys. It's unbelievable, five ounces, so heavy. Invest in gold or silver with www.noblegoldinvestment.com. That's www.noblegoldinvestment.com. Or pick up the phone and call them at 877-646-5347. Go to noblegoldinvestments.com. Noble Gold Investments, the only gold company that I trust. The U.S. Space Force and the National Reconnaissance Office have successfully launched their latest space observation satellites in a mission shrouded in secrecy known as, quote, Silent Barker. This joint mission was conducted on September the 10th with a United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket lifting off from Cape Canaveral Space Force Base in Florida. Once these satellites became operational, their primary task will be to monitor objects with geosynchronous orbit, which is situated approximately 22,000 miles above Earth, C4ISR Net has reported. This mission was originally scheduled for August 29th, but was postponed due to adverse weather conditions. The tracking of activities in space, particularly within the geosynchronous orbit, has gained increasing importance for the Space Force and the NRO. This heightened focus is in response to potential threats and aggressive actions by nations like Russia and China in this region. Back in 2020, then Chief of Space Operations General Jay Raymond revealed that two Russian satellites had been tailing a U.S. spy satellite, characterizing this behavior as, quote, unusual and disturbing. A local volunteer group issued a statement on Sunday reporting that a devastating airstrike by the Army on a market in southern Khartoum resulted in the tragic loss of at least 40 civilian lives and left numerous others wounded. This incident marked the highest single incident death toll since the commencement of the war in Sudan back in April, Reuters reported. As the protracted conflict between the Sudanese army and the paramilitary rapid support forces approaches its five-month mark, with neither side declaring victory nor showing concrete signs of pursuing mediation, the frequency of air and artillery strikes in residential areas has escalated. On Sunday morning, drones executed a series of heavy airstrikes in southern Khartoum, a predominantly RSF-occupied district of the city, as conveyed by an anonymous eyewitness who spoke with Reuters reporters for security reasons. Photographic evidence shared by a local volunteer organization known as the Southern Khartoum Emergency Room depicted numerous injured women and men, along with what appeared to be lifeless bodies shrouded in cloth, some of them clustered together. The inhabitants of this area are primarily daily wage laborers who, deprived of employment opportunities, lack the means to escape the capital due to financial constraints. A Secret Service agent who was present with President John F. Kennedy during his tragic assassination in Dallas almost six decades ago has stirred fresh inquiries regarding the notorious magic bullet theory and the possibility of multiple shooters. Paul Landis, now 88 years old, served as a young agent assigned to protect First Lady Jackie Kennedy as the presidential motorcade made its way through Dallas in 1963. Recalling that fateful day, Landis told the New York Times that he distinctly heard the gunshot echo through Daly Plaza while he walked only a few feet from the president, the New York Post reported. 
Subsequently, he heard two more shots and witnessed President Kennedy slumped in the back of an open limousine. Landis recounted how he had to take cover to avoid being splattered with brain matter. However, Landis's narrative diverges from the official government findings. Amidst the ensuing chaos, he claims to have retrieved a bullet lodged in the car's back seat where President Kennedy had been seated and placed it on the president's hospital stretcher for investigators. This 6.5 millimeter bullet had long been believed to have fallen from Texas Governor John Conley's thigh wound and was famously labeled as the, quote, magic bullet. The Warren Commission, tasked with investigating the assassination, concluded that this shot, allegedly fired by a lone gunman, Lee Harvey Oswald, had miraculously traversed through Kennedy's throat from behind, then struck Conley's right shoulder before inexplicably causing wounds to his back, chest, wrist, and thigh. According to the commission's findings, one shot missed the motorcade, another was deemed the, quote, magic bullet, and the final shot fatally struck Kennedy in the head. Landis did indeed place the bullet on Kennedy's stretcher at the hospital, but he now entertains doubts that, at some point, the bullet was transferred from the president's stretcher to the governor's as they were positioned close together during transport. The Warren Commission had ruled out the possibility of the bullet originating from the president's stretcher. Though Landis was never interviewed by the Warren Commission, he has come to believe that the bullet struck Kennedy but was underpowered, failing to penetrate deeply into the president's body before popping out as he was being removed from the vehicle. Consequently, despite previously maintaining the belief that Oswald acted alone, Landis, now six decades later, finds himself questioning that conclusion.